<coughs> this is BTEC Engineering, Unit 7, Section A13, on page 25 of the examples booklet. Now, now that we've finished A1 to A12, and we've used graphs to estimate gradients and find turning points, we now need to do it algebraically. So we actually find the exact answers in order to compare. So this is much more advanced than what we've done so far. Now, in this case, we might want to follow the process through and just try to apply the numbers, the rules to the numbers that we do in your examples as I do in this example. Now, this is a video and not a lesson, so you may need to pause to take notes. You will need to take notes in order to successfully complete the assignments. So, page 25 of the booklet. So, the first question asks us to find the first and second derivatives of s equals t squared minus 5t plus 4. Now, the first derivative is an example of a gradient function. So, it's basically a rule to find the gradient for a particular function. And for different types of functions, so this one is t squared minus 5t plus 4, there are different rules for how to differentiate it to get the first derivative. Now the second derivative is when we, we take that process of different, what's called differentiating to get the first derivative, and then we apply it to the first derivative to get a second derivative. Now the importance for that is it comes in later for turning points. We need the second derivative to work out what type of turning point we're working with. Now, so, differentiating. Now basically we're going to be applying certain types of rule. Now the actual mathematics proving these rules is, is very, very advanced. So we won't be doing the backgrounds to why these rules work. We need to be able to apply the rules, apply the formulae step by step. Now what you'll need to be able to do is to look at these examples and just tinker with them to make sure that you can do the same process with just slightly different numbers. For example, t squared plus 3t minus 8. You'd have to adapt the process we use for this quadratic to that quadratic. So whatever you need to do, make sure you're following the process. Now there's a certain notation that's followed. So when you differentiate, well we've got s on the left hand side and t on the right hand side, so we'd call that ds by dt. And that's what we call the first derivative or the gradient function. So it's a function to find gradients. Now basically for, for something to the power, the rule is, so if you've got t to the power of n, and it may have a number in front, the rule is to multiply by the power and then you take one away from the power. So that's the rules for differentiation for a function t to the n. So when we've got t squared, the n, the power, is 2. So the first step is we multiply by the 2. So 2 goes to the front, and we take 1 off the power. So the power was 2, taking 1 off the power is 2, take away 1. So we follow that step exactly. t squared times by the power 2, take 1 off the power, that's it. If you've got an mt plus c, well that's like a straight line formula. The gradient of a straight line is the m, the value that's in front of the t. So the gradient equals m. So for the 5t plus 4, we need the number in front of the t, the minus 5. And that's, that's differentiated. We then simplify. So 2t, two, 2 take away 1 is 1. We don't usually write powers of 1. So you could write, it's up to you, write the power of 1 or just leave it as 2t. Minus 5 doesn't get simplified. So the formula to find gradients for t squared minus 5t plus 4 is 2t take away 5. Now, you need to be able to 
as I've said before, you need to be able to replicate this process. It's quite advanced mathematics, but you, as long as you can adapt to, to slightly different numbers, you'll be able to uh, basically recreate this when you do the assignments. So that's the first derivative. The second derivative, so ds by dt equals 2t minus 5. The second derivative, which is written d2s over dt squared, is where we repeat the process. We repeat the rules to the first derivative to get the second derivative. So in this case, 2t minus 5 is the nt plus c case. So we only need the number in front of the t. And that's how we differentiate a function, uh, basically a quadratic like this. So that's our first derivative and second derivative. And that's all we need to do for part A. Now in part B, we, we need to use the first derivative to find the gradient of the curve at t equals 1 and t equals 3. We're to explain our method and to compare our answers to those obtained using the graphical method in A1. Now I'm not going to compare mine now. I will do find the gradients here and then talk about it. So I'll write these results from part A down here for reference later. So the results were 2t minus 5 d2s over t, t squared equals 2. Now the point of differentiation is about finding gradients. So we want the gradient at t equals 1. So it's ds by the t. We stick the t equals 1 into the formula. So 2 times 1 minus 5. So sticking that, uh, calculating that, 2 times 1 minus 5 is equal to minus 3. So the gradient is minus 3. The other gradient we want to find is at t equals 3. So it's the exact same process. Gradient equals ds by the t. And we need to stick the t value into the 2t minus 5 formula that we got in part a. So 2 times 3 minus 5. So 2 times 3 equals 6. Take away the 5 is equal to 1. And we get our two gradients. So for the pass mark, we need to do at least this. If we want to get merits distinction, we're going to have to explain the method that we've used. And we need to compare those answers to the ones we did using the graphical method back in A1. So these, these answers are the precise gradients. So these are mathematically exactly found. So these are the exact answers. So basically, you would go back to A1. If your answer for the gradient at t equals 1 was close to minus 3, you would say it was a good estimate. If it was much further away, say minus 7, we would say it was a bad estimate. So basically, we will rate how good your answers were from A1 to A12 based on your tangents to how close they are to these actual answers. So for the t equals 3, you would then go back, compare the gradient. If it's close to 1, it's a good gradient. If it's far away from a good estimate. If it's far away from 1, it's a bad estimate. Part C. Now, part C says we need to use our derivatives to find the turning point of the curve and its nature. Now, basically, for a turning point... ds by the t is equal to 0. So we'll look at our formula. 2t minus 5 from part a is equal to 0. And then we have to solve that equation. So we take the minus 5 across by adding it. So 2t is equal to 5. We then divide by the 2. Let's write the step. And we get t is equal to 2.5. But we want the whole coordinate. We don't just want the t value. So we need to go back to the S formula. So in part A, 
the S formula was S equals T squared minus 5T plus 4. We need to stick the T value into that formula. So 2.5 squared minus 5 times 2.5 plus 4. So sticking that into my calculator, 2.5 squared minus 5 times 2.5 plus 4 equals minus 2.25. So our turning point is 2.5, the T value. So T then S, and then the, S the corresponding S value is minus 2.25. So that's the turning point. And to get a meriting distinction, we'll have to compare that answer to the one used in the graphical method. So if the coordinate you got for the turning point is close to that, it was a good estimate. If it's far away from that, it's a bad estimate. That's the sort of comparison you need to make. You'll also need to explain the method, what you've done so far, to see if it's... To get a meriting distinction, you have to explain the various steps and what you're doing. Now, we've also asked to find the nature of a turning point. Now, a turning point... Can only, uh, can only be one of two things. It can be a maximum point, so a point at the top of a curve, or a minimum point, a point at the bottom of a curve at that point. It may go lower later on or higher later on, but for locally, it's a, a top of a hill or a bottom of a valley. Now, there's a, there's a test called the second derivative test in order to test if something's a maximum or a minimum. So what we do is we, we take our second derivative, And we test to see if for that t value, we get a negative or positive answer. Now, in this case, it don't, there's no, uh, nowhere to put the t value in, so it won't matter what the t value was, the second derivative is always 2 in this case. Now, that's positive, so we would write that that's greater than 0. And basically, if the second derivative is positive, then the turning point is a minimum. If the second derivative is negative, the opposite, it's a maximum. Again, the proof to why this test works is beyond the syllabus. You just need to be able to do it. So it's just a case of writing it down, checking if it's positive or negative. Positive means minimum, negative means maximum. Right, so again, this can be quite a challenging work. Make sure, at the very least, that you can follow the steps through by just changing the numbers from the example to the ones you have to do. But this is what you need to be able to do to be able to pass. Best of luck.